Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. We got a lot of requests for this. It's how to do vibrato. Well, before we discuss how to do vibrato, I think it's really important to understand what vibrato is and what it isn't. Now, even the medical community uh, differs on this a bit because they're still not sure what vibrato really is. But as a singer of 30 years and 40 records out and all close to a thousand songs placed in film and TV and touring the world for 30 years, I want to share with you from a singer's perspective what I know vibrato to be, okay? The first thing is, is we need to have really good diaphragmatic support. What? If you don't know what that means, please check out my video on diaphragmatic support because without it, it's the cornerstone for great vibrato. That's the first thing. So it's a, a firmly su uh, supported breath, a breath that comes up into the throat, into a good open throat vowel that is a well-placed vowel relaxing into a state of oscillation. Fancy words, a state of vibrato, a state of oscillation, okay? Now we're gonna get into some of this stuff in a minute, but I wanna clarify this, so let's do this one more time. It's a, a strongly supported breath that is enough strength to sustain a relaxation response to a well-placed vowel that relaxes into a state of oscillation. And this actually expands all the way into resonance, by the way. We're, we're gonna cover some of that here and I'm gonna do a whole video on resonance as well. But I just wanna kinda clarify that. So that's what vibrato is. Let me tell you what vibrato isn't. Now, I'm gonna break down some different vibratos and I want you to understand that not just because vibrato is maybe contrived or it's uh, something that's used stylistically doesn't mean it's bad it's just not a healthy vibrato it's contrived or it's used for a different purpose okay so let me get into diaphragmatic vibrato first so diaphragmatic vibrato which again these are all let's call them no-nos but that they're used maybe in a style or something so diaphragmatic vibratos <laughs> You hear my, see my stomach go, <laughs> moving and I've got my diaphragm. So it's a pulsating um, diaphragmatic support system that's forcing this contrived vibrato. Now, in fairness, there's a lot of people that use this. I'm going to use an example. Aaron Neville does this, right? And I go, <laughs> you know, he does this thing, right? But what happens is, is the whole tone is loud and then when it oscillates, you lose volume. <laughs> Right? And it's this huge mechanism moving that's not creating a natural response for vibrato because it's supposed to be going into a state of, of relaxation response, right? Well, so, but he's made a career of this and I'm not dissing Aaron, I love Aaron's voice, but he's chosen that as a style. We're gonna get into other people that have chosen other vibratos as a style. I don't know if they can do a natural vibrato and they've kind of maybe groomed themselves to um, end up with the vibrato that they have and so they've their signature, by the way, our vibrato is our signature, sort of our, you know, our signing off on the end note, so to speak, right? So let's kind of get our brain around that. But anyway, um, the next one is a vocal trill vibrato, and that's also important because if we do this, it's taught like this. So, and I even, I even do this too, I'll teach, teach this kind of initially, is you take a whole tone, or, right? Take this whole tone, you go, And we take that and we speed it up. Right? And we try to get a natural response out of that. Nothing wrong with learning it that way so long as you don't stay and hover and stay and have that be your, your natural vibrato. Now, that could develop into a vocal wobble and be very stiff on the vibrato itself. And there'll be a stiffness in the you know, be real stiff on the sound, where we want a relaxation response. Again, a strongly supported, diaphragmatically supported breath. Right? Not a bad thing. Now, this begs a pretty big question here. If you notice, I started on a whole tone, and then I went down a semitone, and I toggled between the two. Well, there's a big debate even on where that toggle should happen. There's a very, very famous vocal coach. Uh, he's the leader of SLS, in fact. And he claims that the vibrato should be above the line. Well, if that's true, how could it possibly be a relaxation response? If you're going, you know, right? Now, in fairness, there are a lot of people that use that vibrato. Let me give you some examples. 
Elton John, Freddie Mercury, they have a vibrato that's above the line. Right? But a true or a natural vibrato, I believe, goes below the line. And you're saying, Ken, oh my gosh, you barely started. There's all this information. I didn't know it was this complicated. Well, I'm just trying to give you guys good information so that you know how we can get to our end game, which is a good natural vibrato. So, right? Right? And we're going to get into some other vibratos where some people do it too big. And they have a real big vibrato. We're going to get into that in a second. So a laryngeal vibrato or a larynx vibrato where the larynx is moving, which is your voice box, the larynx is moving and you're shifting the larynx up and down and you're actually uh, contriving or fabricating a vibrato using the larynx. Well, that is absolutely not a healthy vibrato. I wouldn't recommend that, especially because the larynx should stay um, pretty stable throughout our singing. Sometimes we'll lower it for low, low, low notes. Sometimes we'll, we'll you know, raise it to use, you know, it's kind of a sexy, uh, um, you know, girthy thing in the throat, whatever. But for the most part, we really want that larynx to stay stable. That's very, very important. Uh, the next thing is gospel jaw or jaw vibrato. Now, gospel jaw is kind of funny because there's a couple people out there, I'm gonna give a couple examples right now. Whitney Houston is one where, you know, This, this jaw movement. Steve Perry from Journey does the same thing, you know. When the lights go down in the city, and he moves his jaw, right, to create this response. That's also a contrived response. But in Whitney's case, and in Steve's case too, if you really listen closely, it's almost like they've got a pretty cool natural vibrato already working for them, and they're kind of doing that more for an effect. It's not something they have to do to get the vibrato to work. So be a little careful. I've, I've done that too, kind of for showmanship and just for fun. You know, I'll do that again as an effect. I'll do it to sound like someone else or to, uh, you know, look for another style within a different vibrato. So, but that's still not a healthy vibrato. That's, we don't want to go, oh, with our jaw, because that's not gonna help us with consistency and ending up to a relaxation response of a natural vibrato, okay? The next one is caprino vibrato. Now, caprino, it's like an Italian word for, for goat, goat-like, or goat's wiggle, or little goat in Italian. Now, that's eh, 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 right? Now, let me put this back here. Um, again, people have made entire careers on this. I'm not dissing other people's styles. Stevie Nicks. No, I'll be standing in a line, right? She's got that real fast goat's wiggle. Well, a lot of people have that. And that's actually a very unhealthy vibrato. It's very nervous and it's just real tight. And there's nothing, there's no real relaxation response to that. By the way, too, there's a lot of people that have this. And I, I'm gonna use another example of someone you guys might know of a band called Manhattan Transfer. They're a phenomenal like jazz, especially acapella kind of jazz band. They do a vocal stab uh, caprino, which is and they'll do like these kind of cool like horn stabs, like a horn. Um, well, that's an effect. You know, you listen to them and then you listen to their regular vibrato, so they know how to, they have total command of their vibrato, like I do here, and they, I can emulate different vibratos to give you an example, but then I also can rest or relax into a natural state of vibrato. Um, now, vocal wobble. Now, we talked about a little bit about vocal trills. Vocal trills can actually become a vocal wobble, you know, where the whole body kind of shakes, right? Well, in fairness, you know, if you think of someone like Bruce Dickerson, for my Iron Maiden, you know, run to the hills, run for your life. You know, it's got this really wide vibrato. That's his style and it's cool. And you know, I'm not, Bruce is Bruce, man, he's awesome. So um, again, it's a, it's a style, but it's not a natural vibrato. And it's very important to, you know, differentiate this. Um, the tremolo vibrato, which is um, similar to a trill vibrato, is also like a trill, but it's a little faster. So it's, it's Hey, hey, hey. Right? So you kind of had me do the, the toggling back and forth between the notes. Um, that is actually a faster version of that, which is also unhealthy. Uh, so, but what then is natural vibrato and how do we get it? This is really important. And by the way, natural vibrato converts into a state of resonance where we can actually lean into a sound and get a lot of, 
a volume out of something without forcing or pushing too much air. So I just showed you, if I go Nice. I'm taking a, a nice strongly supported sound and because I have strength in my abdomen, I can relax my chest, my neck, and my throat, and I can start to roll into this. Now again, I can't in this one video tell everybody how they can all do vibrato because people's voices are different, and their um, oscillation rate is different, and the width of their oscillation rate is different. So I cover all of this in my singing course called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, but I just wanna give you guys an overview, a Reader's Digest version, so to speak, of how we get to this. So we can start with something. gently kind of work our way and relax our way into the sound. Now, you're gonna start with this a minute, you're gonna go, guys, this is so frustrating. I can get one or two trills, or I can get a couple of them, and then, and then it stops working. Reset, get your breath together, come back again. And you can relax into a state of oscillation, okay? Now let's remember, this is a relaxation response. It's not meant to be forced. It's not meant to you know, plow through. And again, I want to cover this one more time. People say, you should be able to have natural vibrato and you shouldn't have to work at it. Okay, like I, you know, like I said, I came out of my mom's womb just with natural vibrato. Well, I haven't found that to be true. I found that once I understand the mechanism, how it's all supposed to work together, that I can relax into a state of vibrato. Now, we might like a singer's vibrato, a certain singer that we love, and we wanna emulate that. There's nothing wrong with that, but let's learn a, a true natural vibrato first. Now, I promised one more thing, which is about resonance, and I wanna sing a high note, like on an E vowel or something for a second. When we can get to that place where we have a real strong supported breath, relaxing the chest, relaxing the neck, relaxing the throat, we can actually have a ping, a brightness, a resonance into the sound. Now you probably will probably watch a bunch of YouTube videos and you know your resonators and resonance and you know, all this resonance, 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 you know. It's kind of funny because the vibrato is perfect because you go relax into a state of oscillation and because that resonance takes over and I've got really good chord closure and good support, I can relax into a sound without having to force or overseeing the sound, keeping the throat open. Remember that good vowel placement of open throat technique so I can relax into like hitting an amphitheater of sound where it pushes that sound and vibrates and resonates everywhere, okay? Thank you guys for joining me, Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. And until next time. I see the pictures of Nick Lady.